You're listening to the Credit Union Leadership Podcast, a podcast that delivers value and offers up insight that'll help your credit union grow. ServiceStar has been consulting with credit unions for over 20 years, growing them in the areas of cultural development, leadership development, and management training. To learn more about what ServiceStar can do for you or your credit union, check them out at servicestarconsulting.com. Welcome to the Credit Union Leadership Podcast. This is Scott Albrecht, and I am with another Scott. That's right, there's two Scotts. Scott Anderley has joined Service Star Consulting. He is our lead senior learning and development specialist. He is doing trainings for Service Star. He's been here for six months. And like most new hires at Service Star, we do not give them any credit for being a Service Star employee until they actually hit the podcast. And that's when they're officially. <laughs> A service star employee. Most companies have a 90-day policy. We have a did you make the podcast policy. policy. So welcome. Yeah. welcome to the podcast, Scott Anderley. Man, I feel like I've made it. You you have made it. You know, and you've been making an impression and an impact on our our people uh and our clients uh for six months now. Your background mm-hmm. in Chick-fil-A and service and leadership has really mm-hmm. been impactful as we talk about the right way to sell and the right way to serve. Uh, your background uh, in knowing Mike Neal doesn't hurt. The, fa- the the speed in which you've ramped up, my friend, has been impressive. So of all the Thank things you. that you do well in your job, uh, which ones do you believe you do the best? You know what? I was talking about this with my wife. For me, when it comes to work, I don't take things too personally. And I think that goes with the idea of what's the mission and is it supporting the mission? So if someone says, hey, I don't think that idea is going to work or like the example we had in one of our meetings uh, recently of someone saying, hey, I think we need to go back to the drawing board and think about how can we do this better? It's like, well, it's supporting the mission and there probably are better ways to do it. So sometimes I have people or friends or coworkers say, hey, sorry if I um, hurt your feelings or something. And it's like, it, I appreciate the gesture, but it doesn't hurt my feelings because I believe in the mission so much. And I, Mike Neal says it all the time is never value an individual before the team and the team should be living out the mission. So I would like to think that's something that is a strength of mine is that when it comes to the work world, I don't take things personally. Having said that, my wife might disagree because if like my wife says, you know, you wash this dish the wrong way or, you know, you did this wrong, that's going to hurt my feelings. As long as we don't get married to you, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I become hyper sensitive. (laughs) Well, you know, we, we, we did hear from one of your, uh, your ex-colleagues, uh, nobody can outwork Scott Anderley. So, uh, you know, personal uh, witness doesn't go as far as testimony. So I can keep on bragging on you. Thanks. But you did, but yeah, but it's true. Like, I feel like you've got my six and that's really what team is all about. Otherwise, we're all just kind of working for the same person. But there's no there's no team aspect if, if we don't have each other's backs. Um, yeah. One of the things that I think is also critical for a new team member is They've got a new perspective, a new lens that they see everything through and being transparent and being honest is kind of a way of showing love for the team. So in the first six months, like, what have you seen that you'd be like, if I could make one change to make this better, what would it be and why? Man, there's there's thoughts there of remote versus man, wouldn't it be cool if we lived in the same city, you know, because of this remote thing and we've started doing it is. We need to be more intentional about spending time together to make sure we are on board with the mission and the things we're teaching. And what I've been realizing just in the past few months or few weeks is that we're teaching this stuff and we go through these challenges as we're teaching it, as well as our listeners are going through it, you know, and we're applying the things we teach. Like example, this year with the grow model that we teach in our Vertex class, we've gone through the G phase probably like two to three times this year. Because we're less than 12 people and we're changing the organism each time we add someone on there. So we're going through those growing pains of G, R, O, like we're going through this stuff. We're implementing what we're teaching and just us being even more mindful of it as we're doing it. Yeah. Some of the best organizations that I admire practice what they preach. That does speak to our leadership's ability to do their homework on the things that we are teaching to credit unions, right? Because Taylor Murray doesn't go and do service excellence and becoming a sales (laughs) champion uh, classes like you and I do. So, but he is paying attention. Where do you Mm -hmm. find the most fulfillment in your role? Uh, Purpose is where I find the most fulfillment in my role. For me, 
mission is a big thing. Like I have a personal mission statement. For me, it's fight for dreams. So I want to help other individuals realize what are their dreams and what tools or resources do I have? How could I be their cheerleader or coach to help them get to those dreams? And I think the purpose, the why I love being at Service Star so much is because I have found my personal mission. And then I actually followed a Ken Coleman, he's a, a guru on finding like your, your dream job. And I took this test from him called the get clear assessment, where you find your skills, passion, and it actually gives you a mission statement based on um, the assessment you take, which it was pretty similar to what my mission is. Uh, what it had for him was I wanted to achieve my purpose of influence by using my skills of teaching and communication and compassion in the roles of leading, teaching, and the other one was coaching. I was like, well, all those things totally fit with this fight for dreams model I have. And then I remember when I was talking to Mike, I had worked at Chick-fil-A previously as the uh, basically a learning and development specialist there. What I did was I trained new hires and I focused on hospitality, the member experience for Chick-fil-A's. So I told Mike what I loved about my job was helping our team members fight for dreams and realize their potential here and growing them. And I love training, but due to what was going on with some changes at Chick-fil-A, I was doing less of the stuff I loved and more of the stuff that I felt was draining. So Mike was like, Hey, we're actually hiring for a trainer role. And I was like, well, that's pretty That's exactly what I said I was looking for. So in getting to know the mission of the credit union is super cool. I think there's a lot of commonalities between Chick-fil-A and the credit union, especially in the sense that we need to be countercultural in our industries. Uh, Chick-fil-A's mission statements to be the most caring company in the world. And the credit union mission is we want to make a positive financial impact on people's lives. And we do that by people helping people. So that's a long answer, but that is the purpose. That's why I love work. Yeah. And well, I've seen that kind of come out. I've seen it as I've worked with you. I'm a visual guy and we're on a podcast. <laughs> so, so verbally paint the picture of uh, day by day. Like, what are, you, what are you doing to fulfill your sense of purpose on a daily basis at Service Star? Mm, day by day, what am I doing to fulfill the sense of purpose of fighting for dreams uh, by allowing people to win with money? So specifically what I do day to day, day here is I'm working on developing trainings or I'm facilitating trainings. And what's really cool about facilitating these trainings, especially with more of our mid-level leaders, is I kind of think of it as I'm hosting a TED Talk where we're all sharing these ideas and I just present a prompt or theme. You know, I'm like, hey, we're talking about becoming a sales champion. And the idea of being a sales champion is a paradigm shift. This is what we thought we knew about sales and what sales is. And this is what sales needs to be in the credit union. How does this mind shift affect how your team operates now. And I get to be a part of those conversations and listen to that and see how we're inspiring people to help others fight for dreams. So I'm doing that through actual classes. I'm also, what I love doing is you're bringing me on the podcast now. So we get to talk about these ideas. And for me, podcasts have played a huge role. There's two podcasts specifically. One was when me and my wife, we were working like 60 to 70 hours every week, uh, each trying to get debt free. We would listen to the Ramsey podcast to remind ourselves of why we were doing that. And then the other one is Service Star Podcast because uh, the onboarding process was about four to six months. So I listened to you and you <laughs> interviewing all these people to get a better idea of the mission of the credit union, figuring out, oh, this is really cool. This is what I would love to do. And now it's it, when I say I feel like I've made it, that's what I'm talking about. It's like now I'm on the podcast talking to you about this stuff. Yeah, it's how I began my uh, journey to Service Star was I, I heard the podcast first. And, and I was wondering why the podcast listens went up. So for the five <laughs> listeners out there, there's actually a sixth listener. Scott Anderley <laughs> is that sixth listener. So congratulations, Scott Anderley. Um, so you've got your sense of purpose. You know how you fulfill that sense of purpose on a daily basis. You've worked with the team long enough now. What would you say our team's sense of purpose is? Well, I know that our mission is we want to improve the culture of credit unions and specifically based on sales and service. So we do this by talking to the leaders and really having them understand the mission of the credit union as the whole. What I've been doing a lot is more member facing, talking about specifically sales and service, the things that our leaders are going to hold them accountable to and build that vision and you know goal setting for. 
So with that is, I think we're here to be a sounding board for credit unions during their growing pains, because there's some credit unions that are doing it right, and they want to kick it up a notch. There's some credit unions that realize this is not working and we need to be better. And they bring us on to help say, hey, we've seen this. We've built this house hundreds of times with other credit unions. So this is what we're going to do. And this is probably what you're going to be feeling. These are the reactions you're going to get from your team, specifically when we teach this one part or when you implement this. So I think we're here, kind of be their cheerleader, kind of inspire them when things get tough and say, hey, you're tough right now because you're in stage two. And remember, this is exactly what we said would happen. Just keep going. It's going to work out, you know? Yeah, I think that's the role we do is we're inspiring improvement in culture by sales and service. And we're doing that by also inspiring transformational change. That's part of our mission right there. I like it. I like it. You know, uh, if you preach that mission is the key to all things, it's important to talk about purpose, especially as a new hire here at the Service Star Credit Ian Leadership Podcast. Here's another thing that uh, I've been thinking about outside of work, like talk about Scott Anderley, when he's not doing training for service, sir, what, what kind of makes you tick outside of work? What gives you a sense of purpose outside of work? Yeah. I'm thinking about work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, in addition to that, uh, you know, I might sound like Buzz Lightyear about the mission, you know, keep focus on the mission, keep focus on the mission. I love things that inspire people to fight for dreams. So there's a quote from uh, St. Irenaeus that says, the glory of God is man fully alive. So I believe when we are living out what we were designed to do, that is the perfect reflection of worship of the ultimate creator. So if we're living out what we are designed to do, so Mike says, I was born to teach and Mike teaches for a living. He's living out his the best thing, his best what he was created to do. And that is glorifying to God. That's what he's designed to do. So I love anything that supports this idea of fight for dreams. So yeah, what me and my wife do on the side, like we've, uh, we bought a house and part of it, we flipped to be an Airbnb because we have this dream of, we want to be creative with cool spaces and then rent it out to help also help some of our financial goals. I'm also, I used to be in a in independent Christian rock band. So it wasn't like we were huge or anything. We just, we put on our own shows and that's how we made money. And we released a few records. Uh, and the whole theme of that band was fight for dreams. So yeah, when I'm not working here, we're either working on the house, I'm making some music or I'm doing dance parties with my two-year-old where we're dancing to like sync or Ariel uh, from the little mermaid. So those are things where I think it's little, the little things and the big things that show how we're fighting for dreams. I like it. I like it. Uh, rock star Scott Anderley on the podcast on the ones and twos. Well, um, as we wrap up this welcome to service star podcast, uh, I want to I want to give the floor to you. I want you to close us out. What are some of the things that you would like to talk to our awesome, illustrious credit and leadership podcast audience about as you enter into this new role where they might be hearing from you from time to time coming up soon? Yeah, you might be hearing from me time to time, which is a pretty exciting thing to be part of. Uh, like I said, I'm all about fighting for dreams and the dreams. These are the missions of what does it look like to be fully alive for you at your work? What does it look like to be fully alive, like your credit union be fully alive? So the two things I would say that we would want people to do, and then I wanted to share a story about that, Albrecht, um, is find your personal mission, find your why. Because some of you, you may love the mission of the credit union, but you're feeling a little burnt out in your specific role. So maybe there is a better fit with what you're designed to do that you can best benefit your credit union at. Or maybe uh, you just haven't latched on to that mission or that why and really understand the significance of that yet. So find your personal why, your personal mission, and then find a company that lines up with that. That's how I found Service Star, which is really cool. Um, and if I can, Scott, I want to share the story. When I was teaching the Becoming a Sales Champion class, we talked about this idea of this paradigm shift in sales where a lot of us have negative associations when we're asked to do sales. But in the credit union world, we're supposed to be countercultural in the financial world. And sales is actually helping people 
So this should inspire us to a referral sell, to let our members know about products because it's going to make their life better. And it's not really costing them anything up front. Really, it's saving them money or it's making them money. So it's making their life even better. So in one of the classes this past year when I was teaching it, we were talking about this idea of how do we want our members leaving feeling? So after they've talked to us, built this interaction, this transaction, what are what are the goals? And a lot of the things we teach are we want them to know that we appreciate their business because it allows us to make an impact for the community and it gives us a check. We want them to know that we're happy to serve them, that we enjoy the relationship part of it because we're people helping people. We want them to know that we are here to live out the mission and we want, we are thankful for the opportunity to make their life better. But what one person said, this person was from our credit union, her name was Tori Bell. And she said that she wanted their members to leave with a plan, knowing how they can win with money. And she shared this story that was really powerful that I think for some of you, if you don't have a why, if you're listening and you just are working at the credit union because this is where you're at, I think this story will motivate you to give you purpose of why you work at the credit union. And I think a lot of you listening, you probably have a story like this as well. So Scott, I'd like to share that audio recording uh, if you're all right with that. What? Scott Anderley is taking over the podcast. The <laughs> rock star is playing audio. Well, light it up. All right. I'm Scott with Service Star, the training and learning development specialist, and I'm here with Tori Bell from Our Credit Union. Uh, and we're just talking about the idea of becoming a sales champion. While we were talking about this idea, Tori actually shared a really cool story from her branch about what they did to impact a member and do the sales champion way in the right way. So Tori, could you share us that story that you have? Yes. When I was working out of the Washington office as a head teller at the time, we had a member who would frequent the branch and he was pretty familiar. We all knew him. He was very nice and he experienced hardship where his mom had passed away. And because of that, he ended up becoming homeless. He was using like a church's address and we knew his situation and we were trying to pretty much help him establish independence. And because we were so supportive of him and he saw that he could lean on us and he also didn't have family as well. So we started coming across like job postings and we were referring him to different things or seeing what he was good at to pretty much help him tap into his individuality. And he started taking our advice. Um, he started pretty much like working at motels and taking different jobs and things. And because it was working and he was just letting us know he had found jobs and employment and different things, we were able to assist him with getting an auto loan so he could get around and it's easier for him to get transportation. And so he was, you could see he started gaining more confidence. He was getting like his haircut and grooming and he was often coming in just to tell us about like different job offers he's had or just different things that was going on. And you could tell like over time from him being confused of not having his mom and kind of just learning how to be on his own as an adult. And because we poured so much into him and seeing how far he had came, it was it really made me feel happy to work for such a great company that cared more about the person versus the profile or a credit number. And because we saw that he really wanted to work and help his like help himself, it made it easier for us to really support him. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I love what you said about he's not just a number to y'all. He's a person that goes right with the credit union idea of people helping people. Uh, which is what we talk about in becoming a sales champion is the idea of this is we're building relationships. And this is a relationship you had built with someone. And you talked about how you got to kind of celebrate the little wins with your member, right? Yeah, it was very special, a great, a great moment. And because we motivated him, it, he started coming in, like he was offered to come in more, but it was to celebrate his wins. And so he was telling us about different things he was able to purchase now that he had transportation and he was able to drive. And so it really made me feel like we were able to assist him because he wanted to help himself and because he didn't have much family and he leaned on us and we were actually there for him it really helped him in the long yeah. run man that's awesome so you and your branch really talked about or really enacted the idea of people helping people and y'all also were sales champions in the way that you built trust and rapport with this guy because he was a regular you said right he came in all the time so how y'all interacted with him you built that trust and rapport so when he experienced that hardship y'all were able to give him a plan and suggest products that actually benefited him uh, financially and made him feel confident. So that was really cool hearing about celebrating the little wins. 
Uh, is there anything you would want to share with any other credit union about the idea of like from the story or to motivate people on how to help other members like this? Yes, I would definitely say it, to take on that approach. If you look at a person versus who they are versus a profile, that definitely helps in the long run. And it, it, his example was the perfect example of somebody who just really needed that extra push and extra help. And if we kind of just looked at his overall picture and turned him down, he probably would not have prospered mm. as much versus if you're, yeah. if you're following the goal of people helping people and you really stand by that, then it, you would have a lot, you would hear more stories like that often, I believe. Yeah. That's awesome. So not looking at just their profile, but looking at them as a person and trying to help them out. That's awesome. Yes. Well, hey, Tori, thanks so much for taking some time to talk about becoming a sales champion with us, with our credit union. I appreciate that so much. Yes, you're welcome. Well, that was a story, my friend. And you got that at the end of a becoming a sales champion class? Yeah. So so this is the kind of impact we're making on credit unions. This is the kind of impact that they're already already having on their members. And this is the kind of impact that that as long as you, you have a plan to have purpose, you can give members a better path forward. Thank you for joining Service Star. Thanks for being <laughs> on the Credit You Leadership Podcast. And uh, check out those show notes. I think Sky Anthony is going to put a couple of things in there, including a link to his calendar. So you can meet Scott Anthony and talk about everything that uh, he that drives him, passion, purpose, family, and a little bit of rock star on the side. Yeah. We'll catch you on the next episode of this Credit Union Leadership Podcast. <laughs>